comic books and their TV and movie adaptations. Same characters and same storylines. However, one medium is a lot more popular than the other, usually gaining millions in the box office and opening weekends, while its brother medium is simply seen as a nerdy hobby. In this show, we're going to ask the general public, the people involved within the comic books and the people who want to work within it, why is this happening? Why is this divide between mediums and audiences so big? This is Pencil Premier. Our first step on the road to understanding of this problem is to look at the origin of comic books, going back more than 200 years to the very first comic found in Japan. These books were nothing we would call comics now. Instead, simply woodblock printed books containing short stories about folk tale and legends, told in a simple, visual, verbal way. With the publication in 1775 of Master Flashgold's Splendiferous Dream, an adult form of comic book was finally available to the public, which required a greater literacy and cultural sophistication. This was known as the Kiboshi, this then evolved into manga, a book style which is still popular all over the world. In Western culture, an early form of comic first arrived circa 1842 with only a single line of text under a scene usually found in the funny pages of a newspaper. With children's comics, such as the Beano and the Dandy, sprouting across the Atlantic along the way. It was only in 1938 that comic books found a genre that suited it best, superheroes. I think um, really the artwork, the fact it's a different reading experience, and the fact that it's a different kind of narrative, it's a different kind of reading experience, and it's more stimulating, it's visual, and it's um, intellectual as well. The first hero to appear was Superman in June 1938. This genre grew in popularity for children and adults as it was an affordable entertainment during World War II. Having people read about their favourite heroes fighting the Nazi threat helped keep the public moral high and gave the readers a sense of hope. As time passed, more and more characters were born and more people began to pick up an issue. Suddenly, shops began to emerge specifically to sell comic books and comic books alone. Before this, customers would have to go from newsagents to newsagents just to look for a single issue. With characters like Spider-Man and Wolverine for Marvel and Batman and Superman for DC, these characters have never been more popular, especially with their movies getting more and more fans by the day. However, these movies haven't always had as wide an audience as they have now. Straight after superheroes arrived in comic books, they were adapted into Saturday movie serials for children. These shows were highly successful, even with their limited budgets, primitive special effects, silly plot lines and dialogue. The prime examples of this phenomenon was 1960s show Batman with Adam West, which ran for a total of 120 episodes. It was only in the late 70s comic books had their first big shot at the big screen with Superman the movie. With the tagline, you'll believe a man can fly, the movie grossed over $300 million worldwide and sold out show after show. This then led the way for Batman in the 80s and 90s and X-Men in 2000. After this, an explosion of comic book movies happened, being released again and again and again, with no sign of stopping. As a child growing up, I read The Beano um, and Rupert the Bear and everything like that, and I'm absolutely still passionate about those. But um, in terms of Marvel comics and my adult love of comics, it was only really about eight years ago, having loved Brian Singer's X-Men so much, I then sort of started asking my friend who was an expert on X-Men all these questions and then, you know, then I decided to just become an expert myself. Some books are even commissioned for movies after only one issue being on the shelves. In some cases, it's vice versa, with PC games such as Halo, TV shows like Buffy being translated to comics. Um, other things like novels like The Dark Tower, Stephen King's book, which has now been spun off into comic form. They sell really well. Similarly, another title that sold really well recently is Buffy Season 8, um, and Joss Whedon, the creator of that, has um, extended the, the TV show, which finished um, you know, five years ago, into comic form now, and people who like the TV show and didn't necessarily read comics are now knowing that's the only way to continue the story. Obviously, when a show got cancelled, you know, some people left you know, wondering what would happen next, which, obviously, brings out the comic book, like um, Serenity, when the film came out. Um, so they wanted to you know, they continue with the comic, same with Buffy, season seven, season eight, they, want, they kept the readers coming. One thing that is helping spread the word on comic books at the moment is its appearance on worldwide news channels as a serious news report. 
with books such as Civil War, which caused the entire superhero civilization to fight each other over their civil rights. The assassination of Captain America, which appeared on more than 180 news channels, radio shows and websites combined. The inevitable passing of the shield to a new captain nine months on, which was mentioned on more than 20 American TV news stations alone. And most recently, the dissolving of Spider-Man's 20 year long marriage after a deal with the devil to save his aunt's life. While making this program, we contacted Dave Gibbons, a British artist who has been working within comic books for more than 20 years on books such as 2000 AD, Doctor Who, and best known for his series Watchmen, a 12-part book which is currently being made into a movie as we speak. We were scheduled to have an interview with him, but he was called to Vancouver to help with the post-production stages of Watchmen. He did, however, leave us this message. The thing I love about comic books the most is that it's like having a movie with an infinite budget. You can do whatever you want, and the only thing you use is the power of some brilliant minds, a pencil and ink. The thing that astonishes me most, however, is when 99% of what you create in the book makes it to the big screen. All the characters, all the action, all the explosions. It's mind-blowing to me how they can do it and make the finished product so much better for me to watch. One thing most people overlook is how much comic books influence other mediums. TV shows like Heroes, films like Unbreakable, The Matrix, From Hell, all influenced by comics or even based on an actual comic series. I think there's some really interesting stuff coming through at the moment. Uh, there's a generation of filmmakers growing up now who have been influenced by comics. So you've got people like uh, Tarantino, who uses very much sort of comic book ideas and discussions and dialogue in characters in his films without making necessarily a comic book movie. Um, the Wachowskis with something like The Matrix um, and the upcoming Speed Racer as well. Um, TV series such as Doctor Who. You've got viewers and writers who are all interested in comics and that, that kind of generation now becoming quite powerful in the media and that's filtering through. Our final stop on tonight's show is to ask a question that has been puzzling comic book creators and comic book sellers for more than 60 years. What can we do to make more people read our books? Recently there was a title called The Umbrella Academy which was written by Gerard Way who's the lead singer of My Chemical Romance and that really did bring a completely new audience into the store. Um, possibly a death for a character. I mean, there was a, um, obviously with Superman, everyone saw him as a great icon and obviously when it came to the death, uh, the huge death of Superman and Doomsday and everything, obviously that was a biggest selling comic of our time. There's millions and millions of people all over the world, so to say it's an idea to be a comic book, I mean, there's people who go to see blockbusters at the cinema, people who buy the games and play on them, people who watch the TV shows, heroes, you know, all these different things. If you would say, if you're nerdy to read a comic book, then technically you're nerdy if you watch a TV show or a film, you know, something that you want to watch. If you rent out a movie from Blockbuster, Spider-Man 3, you're nerdy. You know, so no, I don't even think that word exists. To sum up tonight's show, comic books are finally being seen as something other than a nerdy hobby. With more mainstream writers and directors working on these movies, they are finally reaching a more wider and versatile audience. More people are reading the books with a renewed interest and rather than thinking of it as a childish book, are becoming connected with the characters brought to life by the writers and artists. I hope you have enjoyed tonight's show and I hope to see you in a local comic book shop soon. Good night. Oh baby, let me come back home I know my baby left me alone Tell me baby, what is wrong I know my baby didn't